Hey, hey guys, it's Nicole. Welcome back to Chronicles of a Crafter. So today I'm actually in my RV. I'm out camping over on the coast. Um, so the video may look a little bit different to you guys, but I'm sorry for the shadows and everything else that's going on around here. But I was dying to bring my craft station into my camper. So just to see how well this would work out um, long term when I travel. Today we're going to make something really unique, really special. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do it two ways. One way would be for you to create your own envelope, okay? And then the other way would be um, for uh, you to have like a package of envelopes pre-made, which is what I have here. I got this at Michael's, I believe. Again, recollection. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but probably a few bucks, maybe four dollars or something. Um, so. I'm going to show you how to make your own envelope, but then I'm going to do the project on pre-made envelopes, okay? So I'm going to show you how to create your own little prototype. Really simple, just takes one sheet of 12 by 12 paper. And um, the project that we're going to be working on today requires three 5 by 7s so that's what we're going to make out of one sheet of 12 by 12 there's also these envelopes. I picked these up at the Dollar Tree a while back. It came with a little book, so a book fits in here. Um, and it was just like a little gift that you can give to a friend or whatever. Um, it was cute. I kept all of the envelopes and I just gave away the books. <laughs> typical me right so yeah I every time I I see something it's all I'm always thinking crafting right so I was like yep I can keep these envelopes and just wrap the books in gift wrap anyway let me grab my scoreboard and again you're gonna need one sheet of 12 by 12 that's what this is right here and the score marks are so simple so we're going to make this envelope right here and to begin, you're gonna score at, this is to make a five by seven envelope, right? So a five by seven envelope is actually five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. You're gonna score at four and at nine. Okay. And the nine side will more than likely, um, <clears throat> sorry, the, the nine will more than likely be the top Part of your envelope then you're going to rotate your paper once to the right and you're going to score at two inches and hmm, at nine and a quarter inches and then you're going to score at eleven and a quarter inches okay and that's it that's all for the scoreboard All right, so I've rotated my paper back again. Um, so this is the last score mark that I made right here at 11 and a quarter inches. We're just gonna go ahead and remove that section. So I'm gonna bring in my big guillotine. This is actually working out pretty good. Other than the shadows, I think um, crafting in my RV is working out for me so far. All right, so you're just gonna line that up with the 11 and a quarter inch mark that you made and just remove that entire section. All right. So right here is the basis of our envelope. Let's just go ahead and fold these fold marks up so we can see what we're working with. And all we did by cutting off that 11 and a quarter inch score mark was made our paper even, all right? Because it's a 12 by 12 and we only need five by seven. So we just evened up our page just a bit. So here's the bottom is the larger score mark, the four that we scored. And here's our top. Okay, so now we want to cut away some of these sections right in here. So I'm going to use my large 
shears and we're going to cut away um, just these four quadrants right here so there's a, a rectangle here at the top and a rectangle at the bottom so I'm just going to use my scissors and cut those sections away I'm even having a hard time seeing I did not bring my ring light that was the one mistake that I made um, did not bring my ring light I left it in the craft room so that's why we have shadowing and and even I'm having a problem seeing some of my score marks but everything's gonna be okay So again, the reason why I am out here camping right now is because there's going to be an Artemis launch. It's one of the one of the rockets from NASA. Um, it's taking off on Monday morning, bright and early, about 5 a.m. So I don't want to miss it, and I still want to craft. So <laughs> there's my dilemma. I had to make a choice, and I chose to come out to the launch. But at the same time, I decided I want to bring all my stuff with me. So that's what I did. I will need to straighten up some of these cut marks, I can tell. Because again, the scissor has its own shadow. Uh, the paper has a shadow. So I just don't want to cut the wrong section. That's why I'm being very careful. I'd rather cut it too small than too big. Okay, so now this is what we're working with. This is what the envelope will eventually look like. I can tell I still need to shave off a few, a few smidgens here on the side. But it really doesn't matter because we're going to take our pencil. And I am just going to simply draw marks on here to give me the angles that I need. So I'm just going to place my ruler at the corner right here where these two pages meet and I am just going to uh, use my mat to give me the right angle that I need so again I'm just placing it on there and drawing a pencil mark right there okay and I'm going to do the same thing for the other side So the angle that you want to get is pretty much a right angle, but an isosceles triangle. And um, we're just going to go ahead and cut this away right here on both sides. So simple so far, right guys? There's that. And then we're going to do the same thing for the top, except you want smaller angles. So you want your top of your envelope to come down and still cover the whole um, middle section, right? You don't want it to come in too close. So what I do is, again, just line this up with my um, score mat or my cutting mat, actually. And I'm just going to... Draw a little line right here. Let's see if that's wide enough. Yeah, I think that's wide enough. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. All right, then we're going to take our scissors and cut away those little triangles as well. Now we have that, which kind of looks like this. Right, there's our original prototype. Kind of resembles, okay? We made exactly the same thing. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> now it is resembling the same thing. Okay, so there's that. All right, so that's how you make yourself um, 
a faux or uh, envelope prototype. I just need to cut away my score mark because it's giving me bulge in that corner. So you guys may hear some thunder and some <laughs> some rain. <laughs> it may be a little bit more prevalent than when I'm at home. So I do apologize for that. But um, yeah, we're out. We're out in the wilderness, guys. Okay. So I'm just at a campground um, close to the coast. And from where I am, you can literally see the launch like directly across the water so it's like one of the best campsites I've ever been to um, for viewing the um, the rocket launch so exciting exciting stuff anyway we're gonna move on very rapidly from here on out because I'm gonna go ahead and bring in my five by seven envelopes and some faux papers these are the ones that I made the other day I told you about that so I'm going to give you some score marks for this to um, to cover up our envelopes okay so if you have any paper it doesn't really matter um, what size paper it is as long as it's bigger than your envelope you're going to just go ahead and score it at seven and a quarter because this is the first score mark that we need in order for it to fit the envelope then you're going to rotate your paper doesn't matter which side um, I want this right here to be my top so I'm going to score it two and a half five seven and a half and then that's it all right so from there I'm just going to cut on those score marks and it'll be better off on this side of the paper so I can see them or I can just use my large guillotine I kind of wish I had brought my other guillotine this one I'm not really that thrilled about it 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 does not secure the page in place while I'm cutting there's nothing to hold on to right here and this arm is very loose I'm afraid it may slip down and <laughs> slice my hand off but I have to hold my paper in place while I do my cutting and there's nothing there do you see that there's nothing there to help me so I'm just gonna butt a little ruler up against it and apply a little bit of pressure Okay, and then I'm going to rotate my page and cut on those other score marks that I made and let's see again I'm just gonna butt a little ruler up against it get it to the score marks that I made and apply some pressure I'm going to do the same thing going all the way down. Whoa, you see that arm is so uh, scary. Yeah, lesson learned. This guillotine will only be in the craft room or somewhere close to an emergency room. <laughs> I will not be bringing this one out on the road with me because it is scary. Okay. Made it through that. All right, so you're, if you're using your faux envelopes or five by seven envelopes, these are just craft craft paper, just standard craft paper. Um, I cut these down to fit into here. So there's about two inches from on the inside of the envelope that needs to get covered up, and seven and a quarter is about the size of the envelope from the outside. So. I'm just cutting it down so that it fits nicely right in here. And we just want a little bit of something peeking through. Okay. And that will get glued down right in there. Just need to cut away the excess white sections because this is just copy paper, guys. Like I just took this to my um, to my copier and made some paper really large paper from where it started to where it's at now all right so yeah that goes in there oh goodness get down in there okay so that one will go in there um, this envelope will butt up against this one and then this one will butt up against this one 
And then we're just going to make like a little tri-fold jacket cover or, you know, little journaling space or something. So let's just keep tucking these in. Again, they're a little bit wide because of the measurements that we made were for the outside of the envelope. And these need to tuck on the inside of the envelope. But the height should be perfect. So we just need to tuck that down in there. Okay. And get it nice and um, nice and even at the top. And we'll do the same thing for this section right here. I can cut away a little bit right here. Just enough so that this can fit down inside of here. Alright. So there's that. These will be our um, trifold trifold sections for that little journaling notebook type of cover. Alright, so this is going to fold up like that. And then this will fold up like that. And then these two will meet somewhere here in the middle, but one of them will be glued to the other. So I'll just show you what I mean anyway. All right, so next we need to, okay, I can take these out, okay? And apply glue on the inside. I know we spent a lot of time making an envelope. I did manage to bring my large glue mat so kudos to me for that <laughs> and I'm just gonna apply this right in here on the inside section trying not to glue my flap together and then I'm gonna take that same page tuck it back down in here and apply some pressure to get that glue to stick Yeah, I just want it to be um, all inclusive, you know, so like anybody can do these projects. You don't have to run out and buy a package of um, 5 by 7 envelopes if you don't have them. I just basically want you guys to, you know, craft along with me. So I just showed you if you have 12 by 12 paper how easy it is to make a 5 by 7 envelope. So yeah, I just want everybody to... Um, to not have to leave the room, you know? <laughs> Don't leave, hang out with me. <laughs> Let's just stick around here and make things together. I'll show you all the ways to get around not having something, so. So yeah, we're just using glue stick to glue these pages down. And I'm just basically staying away from the flap, okay? Because that's the part that needs to fold up into the next section. All right, and the last one will be glued down in here as well, so. But I hope you guys are all having a great day. It's a Make It Monday, and I'm actually recording this early because the launch is at 5 a.m. on Monday morning, so just want to make sure that I um, put out some content for you guys prior to me getting all um, you know pulled in different directions so I'm recording this just a wee bit earlier than normal I normally don't record on a Sunday or so so but it is what it is and what is that bulge under there did I put <laughs> Look at this giant bead of glue that came off of my glue stick. How did that happen? That would have been a waste. All right. Okay, so there's that. So these three will fold up into each other. Okay, and then this one will fold up there. All right, so I want to glue my pages down before I cover them all. This way when we flip it over, we're covering the entire thing. 
I'm going to use the rest of this glue that was on here. And um, just getting it everywhere on the outside, on the inside of this envelope flap. And I'm going to very carefully place the bottom side of this envelope onto the top flap of this other envelope. so that's going to look like that I know it's hard to see but it's there I promise you it's it's right there okay and then I'm going to do the same for the next section just apply a little bit of glue stick And I'm going to glue this section down right here, staying away from that fold. I want my envelope to still fold freely. Okay. And that's going to go like so. And then this little flap right here needs to be rescored because it has to go around all of them. But I guess, if, I mean, you can tuck it. It'll still fit nicely. Um, you just have to force it to fit, you know. I'm just straightening up my envelopes, making sure that they're all straight. You don't want cattywampus envelopes on this um, journal cover or whatever it becomes down the road. Right, so I'm just going to use my little score tool and just re-score this line because it's now wrapping around two envelopes. Okay. I'm going to wipe away any excess glue, and then I'm going to grab some more paper, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, so I gave you guys the measurements for the outside of the envelope. Um, it's five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. Here is my page that I'm going to cover the outside of the envelope, but the inside of the book, okay? I want each section of the book to have its own um its own personality, its own style. Um, the book will flip like so and close right here in the middle. So um, this section right here has to be facing up, okay? So whatever you put on the outside here should be facing up um, like so, all right? Um, because when we flip the book, o when we flip the cover over, all of these would be facing right side up but if you ran it all the way over to this side it would be upside down when you flip it over all right if that makes any sense so to right now I'm going to um, just uh, use my envelope to line up the sides of the um, the paper so that I can cut it to size of the envelope right so I'm just going to place it right there there's a little bit of overhang on this side over here, which is good. Okay, just a little, not a lot. And I'm just going to make a little pencil mark right down the side here. I'm not going to need all of this. I'm only going to use the top portion to cover up each section of the envelope. All right, so here is where this is going to go, like so. And I will use my scissor to cut off this excess right here that I made the line with. Okay. Only because I don't trust that scoreboard. <laughs> I mean the, uh, the guillotine. It's a little scary. So, alright. And so I know that this is five and a quarter. So I'm just going to go by that measurement. I can take it to my measuring, um, my little uh, mat right here and line it up. And it does measure five and a quarter. So I'm just going to um, score this at five and a quarter and then cut it off. Sorry, Peacock, you lost your head. Okay, so... 
this is going to be my outside of my top envelope. Or my bottom envelope. It doesn't matter. Maybe I'll put this peacock down here at the bottom. Because he lost so much of his head. I'm going to tuck this in. I know it's going to be difficult because it's wider than the opening. But I'm going to tuck it in as far as I can. So that I can um, measure this opening right here that I need to cut away. And I'm going to lose a lot of this. I didn't want to, but I may use it again in the decoupaging or the deco collaging part of it. So let's just see. I'm going to tuck this in as far as it'll go. Yep, I will definitely lose the majority of that top section right there. But it's okay. I will reuse that section somewhere in this journal because that's the really cool part. And this takes a little bit of finagling because it doesn't fit at all. It's too wide, right? We've, we've already established that it was too wide. Let me see. Maybe. Maybe. Nope, there's really no other way to do this. I have to get this in here. So... I'm trying to get this section right here cut away and what I can do what you can do actually before you glue your envelope up if you did make one um, you can do this measurement prior to so here's your faux envelope before you glue it all up you can fit this in here lay this on top of it and then trace out the section that you're going to need so this is what i'm trying to um, accomplish right here is get this section removed so that all i have is this left and then that'll fit perfectly on this opening right here so i know it may look a little confusing <laughs> you're probably like what is she struggling with what is going on on chronicles of a crafter today anyway I am going to get my pencil out and just I'm going to trace right along the edge of the envelope knowing that I'm going to cut closer to the edge once I flip it over so here I'm just I just need to get this measurement right here okay it's not even straight this is no science involved guys <laughs> no science involved whatsoever this is just get it done as best as you can and then this will go back on here and all I really need to do is cut along just slightly above it because I know I cut it too high I mean I my marked it too high so I'm just gonna cut along just in here you can also like do the the feel motion you know just uh, feel for where it is right and then probably use your scoring tool to get that done but it's no no precise situation right there right you're just winging it just like I am okay for the most part I am so now I've made a mark on here I'm just gonna try to follow it as close as I can without really going down towards that pencil mark that I made and we'll just see what we got. <clears throat> All right, let's just see what we got. This will then go. Oh, wow. Look at that. That almost lined up perfectly with the previous <clears throat> part that we tucked in. So that's what I'm trying to do. Okay, I know the opening on each envelope may vary slightly, but I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to use this as a template and cut it out on these as well. So I'm going to go do that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so I just used my really large paper clips to hold this in place and I actually cut two of them at the same time. So this one will go here on this section keeping the envelope still usable, right? This one will go right up here on this section. 
still using the envelope opening and then this was my original one that I cut down here at the bottom okay so I'm just going to use some glue stick again um, crafts uh, craft bond by Elmer's I'm going to grab my glue mat and I want to place it on an angle inside the envelope so I am still watching echoes I, I thought I mentioned it to you guys a while back like maybe maybe on stress-free Saturday I think I mentioned it um, yeah but I'm watching echoes I think it's pretty pretty intense it's uh, interesting the lives of twins my grandmother was a twin and um, actually on both sides of my family my grandmothers are twins and I just find it so fascinating oh look I ran out of glue stick perfect um, I have more so let's just go ahead and pop this down right here lining it up nice and even because this is these are the marks that we made for this section right here okay so it's not even I'm gonna slide it over just a little bit maybe I should start from the far side nice and even yeah that worked out much better okay Yeah, I just I I am I am not fascinated with twins, but I do think the lives of twins are pretty fascinating. And um yeah, the the sisters in that show are just whoa, the first two episodes were just like who is who and what is what? Like <laughs> who's the good one? Who's the bad one? It's just really really fascinating the tricks twins play on their parents and you know other family members it's just really not so much cool but definitely intriguing very fascinating I'm gonna grab my I have another um, Elmer's bond but I think I'm just gonna use oh, a brand new scotch create glue stick when I grabbed all of these things to make my way out here I wasn't sure what I was grabbing. I think I have Christmas paper in my in my craft bag. I have Halloween paper. I just wasn't sure like like really where do you think you're going, Nicole? <laughs> and how long do you think you're going for? Because I think you'll be back before Halloween. But my space is very tiny. I am working on my kitchen counter in my in my RV. So it is a very small space so but I was very pleased that I was able to get my camera jig and everything else in here so very happy about that process I do have some overhang over here I'll just cut it off with my scissors when I'm done okay and I'm just tucking my craft um, my little silicone mat into the pockets of each envelope just so I don't get glue in places I don't need it to be and the corner of the silicone mats are working out smashingly um, before I start make sure I have my paper okay and applying just enough glue to go around the edges and the center of this envelope right in there the other thing that I'm watching right now on um, I think it's on Netflix I believe it's on Netflix um, I've been watching the untold stories like so all of these sports um, related untold stories I think those are pretty cool as well also bad sport I believe is the call is the name of it um, it's about you know in history not so far back but like you know between the 70s and the 2000s there have been so many sports scandals and everything else you know sports related so I've just been checking those out again whatever you're watching on 
Netflix or what have you, please drop me a little comment down below just so I know um, what you guys are are doing. So if you can notice, I mean, if you notice, I have some overhang here on, on the side of the paper. Not so much on the bottom one because I did cut that one precise, but I used it as my template for the others. So I'm just going to just use my envelope as a guide, trying not to cut the actual envelope. I'm just going to cut away any of the excess paper that's overhanging. So let's see what else is going on. Um, nothing really. I think I told you guys. I've caught you guys up with everything. Yeah, but check out Echoes. It's on Netflix. I think it's. Um, I mean, I like the the uh, suspense drama. I'm not really into like rom cons or. I mean, it depends. It depends on the time of year. Like, you know, I'm just not sure um, if I want to commit <laughs> to any Ron Cons right now or even like the Kevin Hart show. Like he has a movie out with Mark Wahlberg. I'm not really feeling that type of comedic action type of show. So, yeah, lately I've been watching a lot of mysteries and dramas so there's that I think it's coming out really good guys so far so good this is gonna fold here that's gonna fold there and this is gonna fold over and it's gonna be so sweet um, just wherever you have any excess paper make sure you get rid of it if you notice my paper is not cut exact to the envelope so to avoid um, making it a jagged cut, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm just going to cut away whatever's overhanging. Oops, sorry, you can't see. Whatever's overhanging up here at the top. So on the top of both sides of this upper envelope, it is giving me some bulge. So I'm just going to snip that away. And then go in with my glue stick on anything that didn't stick all the way down. So like right up here. Making sure my envelope stays open. And I got a little bit of glue on my mat. So I'm just going to slide that right underneath there. Okay. So every so often, because we're using glue stick, you want to make sure, you want to just double check that your pockets still are open and you can still put your hand down inside of there. And that's why we didn't worry about tucking paper all the way down in there because, you know, one, it would have bulged and two, the pocket may have sealed up and then we'd have a problem, like a real problem. <laughs> this would be called something else at this point. It wouldn't be um, a little envelope journal okay so there's that now I went ahead and cheated and went and just cut my papers um, ahead of time I'm going to use this down here at the bottom I put a little pencil mark right here so I know that this page has to come up to at least right there in order for any of this to work my paper is cut crooked because my guillotine is a mess like <laughs> it's just it's just not the best and I wish I had brought my other one but we're working with what we've got so my paper itself barely meets that line and here is the upper page that I'm going to use for that and wherever it does not actually touch you can just go in with some good old-fashioned washi tape washi saves the day on a lot of my projects <laughs> so like right here they barely barely touch so if you want you can um, disguise it with like a full sheet of washi collage okay I don't know how great that's gonna look but um, if you have just a regular roll of washi I actually only have these that I think would even remotely look halfway decent because the rest of them are faux stamps okay these are all just various 
washi stamps and um, the other one that I have are these very light colored flowers but if I put one here then I'm almost gonna put one down here at the bottom just for continuity and um, aesthetics so we'll see what happens I'm gonna try to get this as close to perfect as possible but junk journaling is not about being perfect right so it's all about just having fun with paper but still making it pretty you know when we're done here I probably should ink all around the edges and um, so I have a few of my inks with me speaking of inks uh, Saturday's project <laughs> Saturday's project was a little like mind-blowing right because I was not sure if I was able to make label stickers but I just want you guys to see what I actually did I ran all of those labels that we made through that label making machine or that sticker making machine um, by Zyron and I was able to make all of these stickers and I still have um, this Zyron paper left in that machine so I can still like run it run through a ton more things so I told you I think I had hundred and fifty four stickers and all and um, yeah I was able to make hundred and fifty four sticker labels but I am almost committed to never buying any more of those um, those little stickers uh, from Etsy or Amazon or um, what do you call it? AliExpress anymore because it's a waste of money so these are the ones that I would normally get from AliExpress but even though they're cute and interesting I think mine came out just a little a little bit better okay so my bottom section of this paper is down and it's looking pretty good it's looking like it passed the mark so hopefully the top section will not need any washi and so yeah these are just the only three that I ran through inside out <laughs> so if you notice the label is backwards and it's sticky on the wrong side so I just went ahead and stamped it on the opposite side because I can't use this other side really so anyway I, I was able to save three that I totally messed up but I'm okay with that and I know I should be using my glue mat right here but I'm trying to stay on the envelope as much as possible so I think I'm okay with that okay and here is the top sheet that I want to use I'm gonna go all the way up to the top because I think that's more important than getting it to line up here in the middle because again we can always go in with washi or something to fix that Oh, I actually have a roll of paper towels this time guys no dry wipes that's the one thing I did not bring with me was dry wipes and you can't even really tell I mean there is a gap there but you can't really tell I'm gonna leave this to sit flat for a while so that it dries um, really good and I'm gonna cut away the excess over here trying again to stay away from the the envelope itself and I'm only cutting the excess paper sweet and I think I have some excess paper on the bottom section of this envelope right down here so I hope you guys are having a great day. Our Make It Monday may run a little bit long, but if you guys hang out with me, I will always be here. Like, 
there's no problem with me not showing up. <laughs> I mean, if you show up, I'll be here. So, um, yeah. My kitchen counter is getting a little bit crazy. I have more, like, scraps and glue and everything just stuck into the table. I'm going to have to do some major cleaning when I'm done here. But let's just finish this up for the top flap right here. Again, when all of this folds, you want this to be right side up. So this is the way you have to look at it, right? So I'm just going to take probably the rest of this peacock. So it doesn't matter what's back here. You just really want this section to be facing right side up. So I'm going to take this peacock that I had to cut away and I'm going to flip my page over line it up nice and evenly and actually I can just glue it directly down let's just do that why waste the time I'm just gonna glue it down right where I want it to be Just making sure that you stay away from the fold of that flap and that your paper has the right orientation again all of this is right side up on this side the peacock should be upside down right because when you flap it over it's going to um, it's going to be right side up and I'm not happy with the placement so I'm just going to slide it down just ever so slightly okay and then I'll flip it over I'll trace it with my pencil and then cut this section away so much easier I hope I got more of the peacock this time because like, <laughs> here I am gluing the page down and um, I have to cut it away again. That was closer than I really wanted it to be. But it's okay. Yep, just barely, just slightly too close to the edge. But I'm okay with that. Um... Yep, I'm going to cut away that section, and that should be it, guys. Let's see. Just using my bone folder to smush this into place. And, yep, whatever has not glued, I will go in with the glue stick. looking pretty good so from here we have all of the space we can tuck lots of things in it folds up nicely across this way here and we're gonna let this flap dry completely before we fold it again and I'm just gonna squeeze whatever art glitter is underneath there into place and yeah I like it let's see what else can we do um, let me get some just regular paper and see if we can make some things with it and I'll be right back alright guys I'm just thinking of all the different ways that I can wrap this project up it's been going on way too long it's very creative though so I mean if you're not crafting along with me and you do go back and look at this video you may find that um, you find other and better ways to do a lot of this stuff um, if you do, just, you know, tag me and I will show you guys some love out there on your projects on whatever social media um, that you guys use. As you can see, I've been looking at all these different things that I can possibly do on the outside. I definitely want to use one of my very own um, stickers that I created, my little sticker label. So, yeah, I think, I think that's going to work out really well. 
uh, probably put that somewhere on the outside here um, and then I realized like okay I, I talked so much about making sure that your flap on the outside is facing right side up I forgot that the entire thing is upside down like I mean on this side so it's upside down on the inside guys like what was I thinking anyway um, on the back if you were to hold it it, it doesn't matter like you can hold it right side up upside down it really does not matter um, because this is such a versatile um, um, little scenario booklet you know it's made out of envelopes so anyway let's just move on I am going to stitch a three hole pamphlet stitch little booklet right on the inside here on this section I hope this works I have never done this before stitched in a journaling um, booklet and this is actually 40 sheets so this is this right here is 10 pages of plain white paper but if you count each side um, each page ends up being four writing spaces so you got one here one here and then um, on the other side you have two more so that's four um, and then when you add them all up it ends up being 40 pages that you can possibly write on what I need to do is scoop my booklet all the way up to the edge of the uh, envelope so that it does not impede that pocket on the back side of it and when I'm done you'll see what I mean but um, but I also want to make sure that I get it really nice and tight inside that crease right along there okay without piercing my paper uh, the other thing that I realized <laughs> I brought my all and I forgot to bring a needle not a problem I am just going to first move my other project out of the way for now I'm just going to use the all and um, just do a three hole pamphlet stitch this was just plain paper that I got from a um, like a little notepad or a sketch pad and I'm just gonna put three holes in here somewhere along the spine so I'm gonna pierce my hole wide enough so that I can thread it or you know stitch it without um, a needle because I forgot to bring one so there's my life I can't believe that I forgot a needle I mean I may have one I just don't know if I actually pack one or not so that's the problem I don't feel like spending any more time looking for something that I'm not even sure if I brought it but I'm using brown wax thread so this is this should uh, basically um, thread itself or stitch itself if your holes from your all is big enough so I'm just going to make sure I open up those holes wide enough that I can get the thread in without a needle because whoops my bad I forgot to bring one so I'm just gonna try this uh, solo mio <laughs> okay so that went through the problems are getting it from the outside in so you may have to push your papers <clears throat> back the other way oh, the drama the life of a crafter crafting on the road I mean that should be a channel by itself because the challenges that we face as a crafter they only they only multiply when you're in an RV <laughs> like I just got my little stamp stuck to my all go away um, yeah so <laughs> guys I hope you like have or at least see some value here on this channel like I am I am truly a crafter like I'm not I'm not winging this all the time but you know sometimes I tend to make things just that much more difficult by putting other elements into the pro <laughs> into the process right so I didn't have to do this but I like crafting so and I love making books 
and I love making ephemera. This may be the toughest part is getting two thread, um, two th pieces of thread into one hole. I'm going to use my awl and see if that will help. I'm trying not to pierce my pages in a new spot or my thread on the other side. This may be the shoddiest <laughs> the shoddiest work you've ever seen on YouTube. <laughs> Sorry guys, these are the chronicles. Like this this is like real life crafting right here. So let's see what we got. Oh, it worked. Yay. All right, again, you don't want to thread your thread or, you know, pierce your thread. And you want to make sure that one side of this thread is on the other side of this little bridge right here. So you want to make sure that you have two little wings on either side of the bridge. Okay? And I'm just going to pull it tight, not tearing. Put a little knot in it. That's a lock knot. One side goes one way, the other side goes the other way. So it's right over left and then left over right. Okay, so that worked out. Very little problems that I can think of so far. Um, all right, and to get my pages in here, I just went through and just cut away. I just scored off with my little um, craft knife, just scored away um, any of the excess paper around it that I did not need. So this folds up here. And then this folds up in here and that is still so cute it works okay and again our flap has to be recreased anytime you add bulk and my stamps are sticking to everything okay so there's that again my page is upside down on the outside so to fix that problem I'm just gonna just gonna cover up like what I think needs to be covered. I'm just going to pop that down right there like that. Use Craft um, Scotch Create glue stick. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right in the middle and art glitter around the edges. Okay. And this is just a little label of sorts that came from some packaging and this is just a little number number label okay and I'm just gonna place that right right here and then I did pull out one of my new little thingies these little things that I made the other day from <clears throat> an actual stitched label so I'm just going to place that right on the outside here you may place it here and then cover up my boo-boo with my upside down paper right there so again scotch create glue stick in the middle and then art glitter around the edges to make sure that everything stays down okay. I know in my outside of my paper is so pretty too and I just wasn't thinking I was not thinking and that's how you end up with stuff upside down all right, so now this is our closure. Yeah, that's going to go right over it. This is going to go right here. It's just a little stitched with love. And place some art glitter glue. Right there. And you can't really tell. All right, so let's make our closure. I pulled uh, this two inch strip of black cardstock, nothing fancy. I'm just going to cover it up with some of this very same paper that we've been playing with throughout this project. Um, 
let me just grab my little stamp to make the the top and bottom of the closure and I'll be right back all right guys I'm gonna wrap this project up like I said before I said it before I was gonna wrap it up and now I'm definitely gonna wrap it up um, I just worked on a closure I had to make so many decisions not to mention my space is like creeping in on me I have all kinds of things here on my kitchen counter so I need to get all of this out of here <clears throat> So I just had to make some decisions. This is just a little um, little sentiment. It's, it's a definition of a mailbox. I'm just going to place that down right here. I went through several variations of this belly band closure thing with my um, my tab punch. Okay, so this was supposed to make a tab like one of these and I went through so many variations of them but now I think I finally settled on the very first one that I made <laughs> I just need to line this up let's get it centered with the flap right here and then I'm gonna line up my little um, sentiment behind it if you want you can put a little pencil mark on there so you know not to go past that or um, just slightly underneath it so that you know that's where you're going to place uh, your glue so I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue directly on my lid right here and where's my other pencil mark right here I can't even see it great I'm gonna put it on this I'm gonna put it on here so I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue right here on the edge and over here on this edge okay and I am just going to place that down right on that previous glue mark that I made and wipe away the excess with a dry paper towel and hopefully I did not infringe too much on the center of this little card I thought about so many different variations and I will probably make another one of these just because it just doesn't sit right with me that it took me so long to make one of these um, but yeah I mean when you're working in a confined space and you don't have everything that you're used to having in your normal crafting area um, it does get to be a bit of a challenge so I'm all about creating challenges for myself and I think I've accomplished that 100% this is the first time I'm crafting in here so yeah this is a total total new space for me so it took me a little while to unpack everything then it took me a little while to like get acclimated with where everything um, should go and um, not to mention I'm in an RV so I still have to like do all the RV things uh, you know the normal RV stuff and um, yeah so challenges nothing but challenges I am going to just thread this with some crocheted ribbon just gonna put a little bit through there and holy moly okay so um, I don't want to rip my thingy so let's see if I can get that up there okay sweet all right and yeah this is now my little closure and I'm sure you're probably thinking well, what did I need this for if I'm gonna tie it up with this ribbon but I just think it looks so much cuter and I could have put some eyelets on the um, the closure as well um, I'll probably do that afterwards you know just trying to tie a little bow right here in the center um, that may or may not work out based on how well I tied my first part of the bow and um, I just went and uh, cut a bunch of different things see now you can just slide this oh no you can't ha you can't just slide it off my previous um, prototype or attempt of it I just slid it right off but now you can't you have to undo the bow you guys all right so I would take the ribbon out of this side in order to open it and I just went ahead and made a bunch of like little 
things from the remainder of the papers that I had left over and just tags and journaling cards all of these things can fit down inside of here yep this tag is small enough to go in there so it's a very large tag but it can fit down in there um, several journaling cards what else do I have more tags that I did pop eyelets into so yeah all of these things can just go down into all of the pockets that you've created oh and I did go back and finish off the numbers so if you notice initially when we had cut this piece off here it removed the number so I just found that piece that was laying around and I went and glued it to the back side of the envelope um, opening so yeah you won't see it when it's full but if you remove it there's the finished part uh, part of that number and I did that to all of them so here's the 20 and the 17 so I just found that little piece of um, the little missing link so to speak um, will this fit down in there with the journal I don't know this might fit down in here with a full 40 page journal behind it maybe not not to fret this will these are just some journaling cards that I pulled out of a paper pack called botanicals I believe or forest I'm not sure but just some cutesy things that can go down into these pockets of this um, little journal here and I think these will fit down in there so then you fold this over oh here's your journal right so there's a full 40 pages worth of journaling right there this will fold over right here this will fold over right here and then you have your closure I think it came out cute it just took me a really long time to come around to the process hope you guys stuck around to the end <laughs> get in there okay and um, yeah so have a crafty day guys I'm just super excited I'm out crafting in my rig and um, gonna see a a launch this weekend so I'm just really excited about that and did not want to leave you guys out of the process by not crafting anything here on this make it Monday so stay naturally curious and don't forget to like and subscribe down below check out my links um, also in the description box and hit me up on any of the social medias that I have listed down below um, I'm on I'm on Etsy now but my shop is empty I'm also on Instagram and here on YouTube so just um, check it out all right I will talk to you in the next one have a crafty day guys bye